Good evening and welcome back to Drakenheim. These are the untold tales of Drakenheim and my name is Monty Martin, running our campaign as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing the game as a player. And I'm going to be playing the scribe wizard Osiris Cronoly. But we're joined today by two very special guests. You may have seen them last week, and they are back again to finish off this amazing untold tale. And I will have the two of them introduce themselves and tell you who they are playing tonight. You know, you want to go first? Maybe sure. First? Sure. Um, my name is Nina Heath. From, I'm a, one of the lead sculptors at Dwarven Forge, and I will be playing um, a Warforged monk named Combat Humanoid Ultimate Gladiator, but we're going to shorten that down to Chug. Chug! Yeah. <laughs> I, I, uh, I am Nate Taylor, also from Dwarven Forge. Uh, we make uh, hand-sculpted miniature terrain, which you've seen these guys play with a whole bunch uh and i will be playing Rowl, uh my tabaxi ranger i have some really neat art from uh rachel denton on twitter at telinier t-a-l-l-i-n-i-e-r yeah we should have that up uh, on screen and i also have uh nina's fantastic piece of uh the incredible chug as well right up on here as well so uh, and I mean, have you guys ever seen a drunken master <laughs> warforged? Uh, the closest thing I've ever seen is Bender. <laughs> yeah, the only robot I know who drinks, but I've never, I've never seen a drunken master warforged. And I think I'm sure great. Chug and Bender would be great, great <laughs> drinking buddies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and of course uh, Kelly as well has produced some really cool uh, art Ooh. as well. So to show off our characters for this evening, who will be venturing back into the ruins of Drakenheim, I'll just center this artwork that Kelly has done here. <laughs> Yeah, he's a grumpy old man. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Okay, looks like is he old? How old? How old is Osiris? Uh, I mean, he's an elf, so I want to say he's actually quite young for an elf, but he looks ancient. He's somewhere close to a thousand years old, I'm guessing. I don't know how old. How old do elves get? <laughs> Apparently, a thousand. It's a good. Question. I'm going to say that they live for a few thousand years, and he's like 800 or something. He's there's his superiors are older than him. But he thinks that he's more intelligent and more <laughs> live than most other people in his profession. Nice, nice. Well, with that, uh, shall we dive back in to this cursed city of Drakenheim on our uh, continuing our fright at the museum? This is part Woo. two uh, of the Untold Tales. For those of you who are just joining us for the very, very first time, these are the Untold Tales of Drakenheim. We are on break from our main series, Shadows of Drakenheim, uh, while our cast member, Jill, uh, starts her new family. Um, but we have taken this opportunity to dive back into the ruined city of Drakenheim with some fantastic guests. So we have our amazing uh, guests this evening, Nate and Nina from Dwarven Forge, who are joining us. Shall we return to the ruins of Drakenheim? Yes. Incredible. Okay. Our, when last we left our heroes, Chug, Mrowl, and Osiris, three adventuring companions and, arche and, and, and archaeologists of various pedigrees planning their expedition to the North Pole in search of the secret origins of the Warforged. Following the footsteps of the old expeditions planned by the Royal Drakenheim Society of Archaeologists, Prospectors, and Surveyors, they have come to the ruins of Drakenheim in search of the old archives held in the museum here. But chief amongst these is a powerful artifact, the true compass, which points the way to whatever the holder is seeking. Thus, our three heroes have come to the ruins of Drakenheim exploring so that they might explore even more ambitious locations elsewhere in the world. Our heroes have found that all manner of hauntings and miscellaneous magical uh, mayhem have been wrought on the uh, on the 
museum, not the least of which the archives are flooded with delirium sludge. And it's not clear. And well, everything is there. There's thousands of artifacts housed in the archives and the archives themselves of what key opens which chest in the archives are missing. And thus now uh, they must uh, petition what remains of the three former curators, professors, and archivists here in the museum to unlock the chests and take their long sought after prize. They have come into a curious gallery uh, within the museum here where um, the curator Nozum has the, the zombified body of curator Nozum has been looking at several magical portraits that our heroes have stepped inside. Each has had a fragment of the memory or soul of curator Nozum. And so far, curator, they have helped the, these personality fragments recall two words of Nozum's passcode. These two words so far have been up and two. What? I thought it was just. just. Oh, we now have three words. We now have three words. <laughs> uh, Is that two uh, as in the number two? <laughs> we'll find out. Sorry. sorry. Uh, so up and just. Um, up and just. Uh, DM hoisted by his own petard. Um, uh, this is why you take good notes, folks. Um, <laughs> I have a page and a half of notes from the from one session. Of this. Uh, um, and so, having uh, helped Nazem through the portrait, uh, two portraits so far, um, they have now. Um, there's a, this third portrait has sees Nazem bound in the service of a pit fiend who de has demanded a soul prompting Mral to creatively run back out to the rotunda mezzanine where a boot was left underneath the giant preserved body of a tyrannosaurus having brought this boot and offered a soul to the pit fiend mortal soul he died it was a <laughs> Uh, so to, to reset the scene, Mral, you've leapt back into the portrait. And as you leap back into the portrait with this boot, um, stumbling out of the boot comes the intangible form um, of Professor Endry as well, rendered in the painting in this spiritual fashion. So you, this spirit before you now in the throne room is the pit fiend, the rippling with flames and scaled hide the horns cur curving downward and this smell in the air of sulfur but also that acrid smell of you know like really nasty paint that's starting to separate and it gets that really like almost like is that paint rotting and it's not mm. but it, it, the, it, rather than that sulfurous smell, it's that smell of separating paint that emanates from this pit feed. And so now, before you, are both Professor Nozum and this intangible form of uh, Professor Endry that has been brought into the painting. So as you offer this mortal soul to the pit fiend, what will you do? Morale, you're the one offering the soul. I don't know what your what your plan is. Right. <laughs> um, wow, well, here you are, just as you asked, a mortal soul. Hmm. The pit fiend eyes up the boot, but his gaze turns over to the intangible spirit of Professor Endry. He reaches out, um, and says. You would offer me this talisman with the spirit bound to it in exchange for this one? Uh, do we think we need your spirit for anything? Do we still need... Uh, Shouldn't we his spirit have Andrew. a say? <laughs> uh, we're still after Professor Andrew's, uh there, information. The, yeah. the spirit of Professor Endry 
l- appears profoundly confused. <laughs> uh, um, he is, uh, he's wearing a light tan shirt and uh, he has those big puffy um, safari pants and the boots that go up past his, his knee, pair of suspenders and that kind of pith helmet. And, and, and so the boot that you've offered uh, is uh, is half of what the original boot was. So it's, it's, it's these kind of like safari boots uh, of which you have one and the other leg of Professor Endry trails off. He's still standing, but it, there's this tether between the spiritual tether between the boot that you're holding and the, the spirit that has appeared in the painting. When his leg, the other half of it, his leg was in the T-Rex's mouth. Yes, the puzzle yes, seems to have it. solved itself. Uh, so it to seems speak. to be a reasonable explanation. <laughs> uh, and and so, um, uh, and, and, and Andre, uh looks hmm. over at, at Nozum, looks back at you and says, By Jove, what's the meaning of this? You, you would ah. sell me out? For Nozum? How dare you? P- Professor Entry, uh, the living people are talking. Let us give us a moment, please. Um, we're sorting living? out. Living? I have my faculties. Uh, well, I... <laughs> well, we can't. We can't. We can't just throw his spirit. Like, if this is this real? Like, are He's we standing right here? I think uh-huh. he can hear you talking. Even Not if you he... grit your teeth like this, and only mm-hmm. your friends can hear you. I'm pretty sure. Okay, I will talk like this too. The yeah. fascinating, like the, the, um, <laughs> Andrew speaks up. The fascinating mechanical marvel is absolutely correct. You should listen to them. <laughs> Did you say that I'm fascinating? Absolutely. What a fantastic cre- creation you are. <laughs> Thank I'm you. I'm going to toss the boot back out of the painting. <laughs> <laughs> and as the boot flies through the I, air, it looks like Endry is going to say something profoundly arrogant. <laughs> and just as the boot goes out the other side of the painting, he's just like, why you? And he just winks right out. <laughs> there could be only one profoundly arrogant, intelligent uh, museum worker here today. Yeah, it's I me. was um, wrong, wrong soul. Uh, I got my, mm, yes. So uh, easy mistake to make. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You have a boot. The the, the pit fiend. I, I don't wear boots. Cackles with laughter at the situation uh, as this unfolded, and replies, mm, "It was a tantalizing offer. I love it when they beg." Uh, <laughs> sir, sir fiend. Um, my name is Osiris Cronley. I'm one of the uh, employees of the Illyrian Historical Library, and I work in the Department of Lost Lore and Magical Truths. Um, I have a question for you. Are you a, a fiend of, of, of intelligence? Do you deem yourself um, into riddles, perhaps? I am interested in bargains. And I am one that enjoys sport. What do you propose, mortal? Okay. Um, I might have an idea. Let me just confer with my two uh, compadres here, and we will discern. Very like well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, we- so if you can't hear us. All right. Yeah, so oh, okay. <laughs> we need we need we need the word from this version of the uh-huh. professor who is uh, bound and gagged, sitting before a pit fiend. If if I can make a bold offer and deliver a riddle worthy of a pit fiend, perhaps we can bargain to allow us to talk with the professor. Well, how about while you're giving him this riddle? We try and sneak his gag off and talk to him anyway. Ah. It's called insurance. Insurance. I like it. He also said he likes sports. So we could challenge him to a pickup game of perhaps football, soccer, basketball. Wrestling. (laughs) Wrestling. Wrestling. Ah. My specialty. I do hear that baseball is uh, the national sport of Caspia, but we're not in Caspia. So what is the national sport of Westmar? Is it wrestling? It might be wrestling. Hmm. 
What is the sport that they usually play in the abyss? Like death ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In all my readings of the abyss, I never heard much of sports other than gut ball. So I bet so, it is bowling. <laughs> um, take so you you give him the riddle while you're while you're riddling him. If you can confound him a little bit, we'll try and uh, we'll try and slip off the gag and see if we can get the word. Uh, the professor. I will use my riddle to distract and misguide his attention. And maybe hmm. you beat him with it anyway. Maybe I will. Either way, we I win. am. I am of the utmost intellect, so it's it's worthy to assume that I can outwit a, a mere devil. <laughs> mm. uh, very well. I uh, believe in you, <laughs> Pit Fiend. Mm. Have you conferred? I will give you a riddle, and the terms are easy. If you can guess the answer to my riddle, then you can have my soul. If you can't guess the answer to my riddle, then we get to talk mm. to your servant here. Really, you don't lose anything. You just, if you lose, we just talk to him and leave. You get to keep him. If you win, you get a soul. I have a counter proposition for you. Really? What could be better than this? Mm. I will offer you what you seek and a powerful reward. I will cast a spell or offer you a treasure provided not I but one of your companions can solve your riddle. Ooh, well, a lot riding on this riddle. <laughs> okay. Oh boy. But if you should fail, and but it will not be your soul, but that of your companion. And uh, okay. <laughs> cool. And the pit fiend, he's he's this giant hulking red. Oh yeah, yeah. He's about yeah. sixteen well, feet tall. Uh, sixteen feet tall, covered head to toe in armored scale plate, um, fiery crimson wreathed around him, the big wings and the big mace beside the throne. I, I turn back to uh, Chug and I go, "If this goes bad, uh, no I whispering now. You'll tell them <clears throat> the riddle. If you say it like this, he can't hear you. <laughs> I really hope you can wrestle this guy." Make it a logic riddle. I hope to find <clears throat> out. <laughs> All right, very oh. well. I accept your terms. And as as I'm talking, I'm going to walk slightly to the side so that the pit fiend's <laughs> gaze is now only on me as I start my riddle. I'm walking to try to direct his attention elsewhere. And which of you will be answering the riddle? Oh, we can't both? Chug. Uh, oh, okay, both of you would like to try. Well, very yeah. well. If both of you would like to put your heads together to solve your friend's riddle, then we shall put all your souls on the table. How does that sound? And now, you can if put nobody... your heads together in hell. Sorry, if nobody guesses <laughs> the riddle. If if nobody guesses my riddle, are, do we break even? If none of your companions can get get the answer to your riddle. Your souls are all mine. But as long as one of your companions gets the answer to your riddle, then oh, you... That's, it's such a harder deal. Did he say that we can all put our heads together? Yes. I believe that's what he said. But then... <laughs> I agree to your terms. Very well. Wait, do my friends agree to these terms? Sure, yeah. I believe in you. Oh, I do. I do. Okay, fine. <laughs> Osiris does. <clears throat> Very well, Pit Fiend. Here is my riddle. In the sea, I may lead you astray. I feast upon both book and play. By your flesh, we share a hue. If you're still following, I've misled you. 
What am I? Whoa. <laughs> You're gonna have to say that one. You might have to say that a few more times. Really make sure it all sinks in. I will let the pit fiend go first. While he's doing this, can I? No, you, uh, you actually need to repeat the riddle. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, for the record, I wrote this riddle today uh, by myself. I didn't look it up. I don't know if it's going to work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're t- <laughs> great way to beta test it. This is it. Don't you have message as one <laughs> yes, of your I cells? Do. Yes, yes, I do. <clears throat> In the sea, I may lead you astray. I feast upon both book and play. By your flesh we share a hue. If you're still following, I've misled you. What am I? In the sea, I might read you astray. I feed upon both book and play. By your flesh we share a hue. If you're still following me, I've misled you. I feed upon book and play? Yes. And yes, I do have a, a cantrip that might be able to help us out here for the my two com, my two companions. Both book and in the play. sea, I may lead you astray. I feed upon book and play. What was the lesson? If you by your flesh, we share a hue. If you're still following, I've misled you. All right, that's a wow. Um, we can confer though before making any sorts of yes. guesses. Um, I, I, I do plan to use the message cantrip to uh, give my uh, companions a hint, hopefully. <laughs> the, 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 uh, the pit fiend cackles. <laughs> uh, um, and, and says, this is one of my favorite tricks. What, what is? Meanwhile, as the pit fleeing contemplates the riddle, his attention focused on Osiris. Chug and Raoul, what will you do? I try and ungag the professor using. Give me a stealth check. Hmm. I, uh, for the record, I still have Pass Without a Trace up. So. I'm, I'm helping Moral do this. Okay. So can can uh, I is imag- Chug is aiding me? I imagine that Chug is just slightly like standing in front I'm of the I'm just standing line of- in the way. <laughs> yes, I am just blocking <laughs> line of sight. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> all right. But do I'm I- sure it's very helpful. Okay. Um, Chug, what I'll, what I'll have you do is you're just like sliding slowly to block the line of sight. So what I'll have you do is give me a dexterity check to Ooh, like good. track it. Yeah. Very dark in here. That is a 22. Okay. Mraul, you can make yourself check with advantage. Awesome. Which is great because... I rolled a one and a sixteen, so, <laughs> so but with all the with pass without trace everything, it brings me up to a thirty-four. Okay, you've come up to the professor, the curator. Doesn't look like the pit fiend's caught sight of you. He's he's standing going. Mm, hmm. Well, who has the answer? And meanwhile, you pull the gag down on. The curator. He gasps, puts his hand over his mouth, and says, Get me out of here! Please! Quickly! Alright, we'll try, but we need to know how to get into your lockbox. It's the only way to break the spell. My, my, my lockbox? My lockbox? Yeah, there's foul magic's play here. Foot, can't you see this? Tell him about sailing in the North Sea. That's what made the others remember. Mm. Yes, you're trapped in your memories, your dreams. Remember you always dreamed of sailing the seas or farming cabbages? Or pirates sailing with pirates? I had this nightmare. This nightmare that I would be... that, that, 
that I had failed as an artist and I needed to sell my soul to a fiend in order for skills. And that then I wouldn't have to just be an art critic. I could actually be an artist. This was my dream, my nightmare. Well, you're stuck in it. You're stuck in it here. Get you out. The phrase, I can't. It's just. And uh, just up. up. Two. (laughs) Two. (laughs) Is that the number two? Yes. How many O's do you mean the number? It's not the number. There's another number. But this is not the number. Hmm. All right, we'll see what we can do about getting you out of here. I mean, we'll get you out of here. The Perhaps we says, should just leave. The pit te- <laughs> peen says, I've had enough of this. Mortals, you've toyed around enough. What is your answer to this riddle? Um, I look back at the other two, hoping for a sign that we got it. Did we get it? I just have sparks coming out of the hole in my <laughs> head. I hmm. I turn back. Perhaps a clue, Pitfiend? Would you like a clue? I need no clues. But if ah. you would like to provide a clue to your compatriots, then it will come at a price. I'm, I'm going to uh, use the cantrip message, which... I, th- um, I, I kind of, I, I, I guess, with verbal, somatic, and material components for message. Oh man, does with the mm. you're gonna need to be hidden somewhere to conceal this. You're out in the. Oh boy. Yeah, the uh, pit fiend will recognize you casting a spell. Mm. Uh oh. Um. Okay. So, so you give up, pit fiend? Correct. I did not say that. You said you don't need a clue, and you said I can give them a clue, so yeah. you must plug Why your ears. Why would I say the answer when your companions have not given theirs? Why don't you write it down carefully, and then we can compare to see who got it right. Correct. Uh, Master Fiend, if I'm going to give a clue to my, um, my companions here, but you do not wish to have a clue, then if you could close your ears and eyes, give me a chance to give them the clue, and then you can try to guess without a clue, since you have such superior intellect. Just mm. for a moment, just count to five, close your ears and eyes, and we will... The, 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 the pit fiend uh, says, very well, I shall make you one offer if you would like to give your friends a clue give to me your arm Oof. did he not say that we could all confer yes yeah, that he, not he, me he did but, but you're you worried tell you... us the answer <laughs> i just don't want him overhearing he did say, he did say put your heads that we together. could all put our heads together all of us so does all that right. not mean that you cannot just tell us Maybe, hopefully without him hearing. Okay, I'm going to try. So I go over to my two friends and we huddle. Okay, so the answer is, <laughs> it's a red herring. Okay, that's what I was going to guess. Oh, uh, that's amazing. <laughs> but I don't understand how it applies to the first part. Uh, in the sea. In the yeah, sea, the, a red wait. herring is a fish. Right. But it might lead you astray. But in literary professions, it's... Something that oh, I'm stupid. I was thinking C, like the letter C instead of the ocean. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. There we go. On the same page now. Uh, yes, a red herring. Um, That's a good riddle. Thank you. Great. Oh, and it's his flesh because it's red. That That's was the-, the key to throw, hopefully, throw him off. But I mean, I thought that it was because, I mean, on the inside, we're all red. <laughs> Ooh. You could take it that way. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Like Jesus. Okay, so <laughs> you went there. I, I, I huddle with my group. I whisper the answer to them, and I turn back, and I'm like, "My friends may have a guess." Go ahead, Raul. I feel disingenuous. <laughs> 
A I red no herring! Problem. Aha! <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess that's all we need. Ta-ta! Very well. <laughs> you may take your prize, says the, 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 the pit fiend. You may have this man. Well, have him? I guess everything worked out in our favor. So, do we ask him again? Um, is uh, Pixie, is there, is there a way me. for us to leave with him? That's, you may leave through the door. But, for your insolence, I tell you this. If you leave through that door, you will experience fiery pain. Why? This is my domain. For how long? Ooh. Well, in many cases, I like to think, you know, you give a, you teach a man to light a fire, he's warm for an evening. But if you set a man on fire, they're warm for the rest of their life. I'm not sure that's so. Uh, all right. Well, thank you very much for your gift of teaching us fire and burning us for the rest of our lives. We'll be on our way. Let's get out of here. Can we grab I, the uh, the professor? I yeah. mean, can he even leave? Well, let's try. Let's try. Let's Chuck, see what happens. Strong one. All right. I'm going to hoist him over my shoulder and just uh, book it out of this place. Yeah. As, as you uh, as you rush out of the painting, uh, you feel these licks of flame. Uh, about you. But they're just painted flames. <laughs> so they they they're harmless. As you pass out as you pass back out, the professor is not with the, the curator is not with you. But you notice that the the curator's image is no longer in the first three paintings. Uh, All right. Well, okay. let's get these last two. Well, friends, I want you to remember this day as the day I outsmarted a pit fiend. That's more than all of us. I a book comes out and my quill starts writing about the day I outsmarted. All right, let's a go. Uh, Chug, you made a good choice in this last one. Do we go underwater or the astral realm? Astral realm. Mm. As you head towards the next painting, you hear. You head down the hallway towards the, the next painting, and where the, the next painting lies, I'll show you on, on the map over here. Um, as you walk... Uh, pardon me. Shh. All I there see we, is Osiris. Sorry. There we go. Got it. So as you walk down the back from the 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 painting that you were just looking in so i'll reveal these areas here here we go so the painting this is the painting here of the pit fiend right surrounded in this in this room here and so the zombie of curator nostrum is in the rooms seated down the three of you are together in the room and you've looked at the previous two paintings now that are up over here these were the first two of of the lighthouse and the garden and as you walk out uh, of the of the original room to this spot, uh, to where the next painting is, which is over, there's another one over here and another one further to the south. But as you cross the hallway, mm. there is something looking down the hallway at you. Oh, right. I, uh, <laughs> I forgot to mention, I might have heard a dinosaur on the way in here. Um, and you forgot this, to mention. As you come out of the hallway, there's this banging noise as the Tyrannosaurus Rex, with the, with the leg of Professor Endry still hanging out of its maw, is trying to squeeze its way through the narrow hallway and snapping forward. So it's partially stuck halfway in through through the room snapping with its maw and roaring outward let's give it the boot back maybe that's all it wants i um 
I, I grab the boot that we had and I run out and I toss it in the general direction of the T-Rex. Okay. Um, so you're going to come out of the room uh, and where are you going to toss it from? So I'm, I'm going to go like right here and just toss it like right over here. Okay. So the boot lands on the ground and the T-Rex um, roll me a D6. Mm. A four. Okay. So the T-Rex struggles with with its vision because of the way uh, the placement of its eyes, but you hear the nostrils going <laughs> as it sniffs out it just and you hear that low <sighs> and and it sniffs forward towards the boot and and it the boot hasn't quite landed close enough for the T-Rex to reach it, but so it's still pulling itself sniffing as it as it looks towards the the, the can the I take boot. my quarter staff and and push the boot a little bit closer? <laughs> okay, Chug, uh, you don't smell like flesh. Chug, give me an I attack roll with your quarter staff. Like you're just trying I'm to attack. Oh yeah. <laughs> what a what a oh jeez. Um. Okay, well that's a that's pretty good. Um, seventeen. You. Take the quarter staff and you kind of like slapstick hockey puck it <laughs> towards the T-Rex, and with a loud snap, ka-chunk, its jaws close around the boot. Seemingly satisfied, the T-Rex okay. backs up and walks back to its pedestal. <laughs> uh, I didn't expect to be right. <laughs> Brilliant, Chug. Absolutely awesome. brilliant. Now, I do have to say, though, that this proves uh, quite the predicament when we do need to speak to um, uh, Professor Endry. Let's get through these paintings and we'll worry about it. Yes. All right. To the astral realm. Are we all going to hop into the astral realm painting? Yep. I'll go okay. first if you want. Sure. Uh, um... As you hop into the painting of the astral realm, um, I will uh, just bring up this cool little bit of art here, because this is a cool map, even though we might not need it. Ooh. The the floating islands in space uh, of of the, the you kind of land in the midst of this floating moat of rock in the midst of a churning celestial sea. And the best way that I can describe the art style is if you imagine Van Gogh's Starry Night with the brush strokes of the of the e evening sky, so the whole world around you is like an animated version of Van Gogh's Starry Night with the brush strokes f forming these milky streams that move around through the world. And even the ground underneath you, um, you can see as you walk you you leave footprints that your footprints are rendered in the dust as if someone is painting your footprints in um and there at the edge of one of the moats of rock sitting down on the edge looking out is curator nostrum uh as as he as he just just this me mesmerized look of the whole world out before him. Hmm. I, I never once visited this museum and I'm curious if this exhibit always had the ability to send us into the paintings or if this is a new feature. Either way, I think that if they decided to reopen the museum, it would do very well. It's quite beautiful in here. It might lose a few souls, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, let's get, get this word. Salutations of greetings. Uh, he, Professor Nostrum turns around very slowly and he says, welcome, come sit. It's, it, don't be afraid. I, as long as you hold your weight, you won't fall off the edge. Hmm. I wonder what's down there. Well, we may never know. <laughs> oh, now I'm curious. Now that he's asked oh, the question, no, I feel no. I must know. <laughs> I, I go over and sit down next to him. And I give these two a glare. 
He, he said, I always wondered, you know, it always struck me as odd that the world stretched on and on. When you look up into the night and you see the stars out stretching into eternity and the world walking as through it. You know, once there were people that believed that the world was a disc suspended on the back oh. of a giant uh, of of several elephants. giant elephants standing on a tortoise walking s swimming through the seas i always liked that version of the world finding out that it was just a ball was a disappointment for me it seemed like as long as we were on the back of four giant elephants standing on the back of a turtle floating through space that there was some sort of direction to it all, some sort of meaning, that it felt like everything was going somewhere, even if my life was going nowhere. What did it all mean to you? I have seen a great many turtles swimming, and they never seem to be going anywhere in particular. <laughs> Perhaps it was just looking for food. Ah, food. That's something that makes life worth living, isn't it? Well, For you meet people, I suppose. <laughs> you know what they say. Just up to something, something. If you can fill in the blanks. <laughs> <laughs> ah, if, I'd a, if I had a gold piece for every time I heard that. Just up to something, something. There was an ending to that statement, but I can't recall it. Can you? It feels like I'm just up to nothing. Creeping in this petty pace from day to day. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. And all our yesterdays. And he reaches down to the, the sand of the island and he scatters it out. It's all nothing, isn't it? Maybe so we should just go down there and find out what's really underneath it all. Have you ever sailed the North Sea? No. I wonder I could see the Aurora Borealis there. I could see the Northern Lights. Oh, the beauties of this world. To see things. To see. Yes all the things wondrous that we can see. Ha! Huh. I remember. That's it. That for me was all it was. To see things. To see all the wondrous things in this world. Isn't that enough? It was. It is. Oh my. Isn't that why you gathered all these paintings around you? You liked to reminders of all the things you'd seen, all the visions that everyone had seen in this world to come. Yes! Yes, it is! Oh, oh all the things. And the pirates! Oh, yes! And the cabbages. Yes, indeed, and the cabbages. What am I doing here? Who are you? Yeah. This is... We're the Astral Res Rescue Squad. We're, uh, we're here... To uh, save you from the throes of nihilism and uh, get you back in uh, back in the game, as it were, the curatorial ah. game. Ah, so that's what this island represents. Mm hmm. Hmm. Nihilistic entropy. Ah. Hmm. Funny that. I am Professor Nos Nozum. What can I do for you? We're under um, strict orders to find some. Uh, Nope, not that. Hold on. Oh, we the North Sea. The North Sea. Yes. We're going yes. to the North Sea. I had the contract. Yes. The pirates. We need the contract to the see pastor. the sea. Yes. Yes. But we've just forgotten the code. Up. Just count. Count. Just count up to. But what was the last word? It was supposed to help number. me. Just count up to. Just count up to. I can't remember what it was. It was supposed to be the numbers. The numbers of the key. 
where I keep the contract. Just count up two. Ah, I've lost it. Just mm-hmm. count up two. That's think okay. Ab- think about the sea. I I'm remember. sure it'll come back to you in time. I needed to know the number for the row, the rack, the shelf, and the drawer. And I wanted to make sure it was simple. So I told myself, just count up two. So it could be like one, two, three, four? <gasps> yeah, row, rack, shelf, floor, door? What was it last Drawer. One? Drawer. That's four. Huh. Maybe that's it. He There's kind of a look of recognition on him. And then he... He says, I won't go to the North Pole, will I? Chances are pretty slim, let's be honest. It's looking unlikely that you'll be leaving the museum anytime uh, soon, Professor. However, you can enable future generations Hmm. see the North Pole to chart it, to make magnificent paintings of it that can live in a gallery so others can see its wonders, capture the Aurora Borealis on canvas. Just... Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go see what's down there. Good luck at the North Pole. What would you like named after you? Oh. A mountain and he steps off into the stars and he keeps walking he doesn't fall he just keeps walking out and as he walks out you blink and a moment later you're back in the gallery and the other painting of the underwater scene he's not in it anymore I, I, I touch one of the paintings are they now solid yeah Fascinating. I start writing in my book again. Oh, we'll have to name a mountain after him. The way the magic in this area is is, is interacting with the paintings. It's it's unlike anything I've ever seen before. There's still a Tyrannosaurus out there. Let's yes, uh, yes. <laughs> just just. Uh, I don't hear it now, do I? Perhaps no. it's content. As am I. As am I. Also, we need to get to the other side where it's oh maybe we can sneak back through the the garden area and get around that way i don't want to have to go through the rotunda mm. again do you think you figured out what you need to figure out where professor nostrum's key is well we're guessing it's we just have. count up to four if row the, one if the rack last two, one is shelf gone that right if he wasn't in the underwater one anymore that means we probably have it yeah oh. i think i think we got it all right where to next? Uh, and, and and of course, Professor and uh, Professor Nostrum's zombie is just a corpse on the floor now. Mm. I will uh, go over and give him last rites. In cross up his arms. In the uh, the in the worlds of Drakenheim, as a world where undead are a real thing, uh, cremation is more customary. But it is, uh, but. Spreading some dust along someone is uh, is enough uh, for for the moment. But I drop sir- a couple of drops of holy water. Yeah, yeah. Doing his thing. Yep. Very well. So, what will you do next? Uh, so we know that we need to get information from Endry who is in the T-Rex's mouth. We also know that we need information from Professor, is it uh, Tazana? I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, Who is allegedly on the other side of the museum. So the question is, do we deal with the T-Rex now? Or do we deal with the T-Rex later? Later? Didn't didn't the archivist say that he might have the information in his office? Yes. True. The office which... We were in, were we not? Yes. No. Wait, you, we you, were? You were in Professor and uh, Andre's office. Uh, there was one set of doors uh, actually right here that you hadn't South door. yet gone through yet uh, in, in the office. And we oh, haven't... We should go back and do that. 
And we haven't explored the East Wing, the Antiquities. So let's Correct. let's clear out this office while we're here. It's right around the corner. Yeah. So we head back to the office, and I'm going to walk up to that door that we haven't opened yet and listen in on it. Hey, and, and while he's messing with the door, I want to um, take a look at that globe that I couldn't steal. And uh, just using my, my knowledge of cartography and travels, I wanted to see if there's any pattern to all of the places that he'd been slash wanted to go and see if I can make anything out of this. I think I know how you can steal the globe. Hmm. I still have a potion of diminution. Does it work on a... Uh... It works on objects, doesn't it? I believe. Yeah, it... it, it... And it will work for several hours. I'm willing to allow it. You can pour it on it and shrink the object down. Let's, yeah. we'll, we'll we'll save it at the, be the last the the cherry on top of yeah. our Sunday of triumph. Hmm. Um, the best way to describe Endry's career is esoteric interests. Ooh. Um, it seems like someone who has allowed his fancies and whims to direct his research interests. <laughs> well, uh, Chug, you're good at opening doors. They are. I try the doorknob. Yeah, the door opens and there's an, uh, um, into a small <laughs> antechamber, uh, with, um, with uh, Professor Endry's desk behind it. And there are several uh, records uh, that are all stacked through here on, on the shelves in the books. And um, a very well-appointed mahogany desk with lanterns all, all around it. Your, your classic professor's study with several artifacts and skulls of various creatures that he's seen. And uh, ha hanging up on the wall is pinned up um, an anatomical drawing of each of the three dinosaurs that are on display in the mezzanine. And so it seems like his recent work was actually trying to figure out the internal biology of the, the three creatures. Um, He's getting a firsthand look now. <laughs> yeah. And, and he certainly is getting, getting a, a, a first hand, hand look. Um, and you can see that, um, he uh he's got very detailed notes be be beside each um and then he uh, there's several books on his table as well of all his his personal records um if you flip through and search around uh through his records um the most recent book that he's actually been writing about are actually his plans to go to the north pole and that he's expecting to see giant uh, walruses, giant um, octopi, giant whales, and hopefully frost giants uh, are um, amongst his list. But then, and then he's saying creatures I would like to see from a very long distance: uh, Remoraz, white dragon, <laughs> um, and so he's listed a few, few others. Um, and as you as you flip through. Um, you can actually see that uh, um, he has a a letter, a series of letters that detail loans that he has procured of vast sums of money um, from several nameless sources to purchase the true compass and like how of, vast we're talking hundreds of thousands of gold whoa um and he has taken pains to the, he's only written in terms of the basically it looks like he's taken out at least 20 loans from different people and judging by the way these are written at first glance, he's done that classic scheme where you get a bunch of loans from a bunch of different people and they don't know that you're getting a bunch of loans from so many different people because these people are far flung. Mm. They're all in different cities. And then he has said, this artifact is priceless. 
Um, and the hmm. the last note the note that he's written is he has r- written down. Um, I cannot write down the key number. Someone will try to steal it from me. Someone will read my mind and get it out. So I've made a key that matches the key. And so he makes a note here that he has a key that matches the key on the wall that he carries with him. He wrote all of that down. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, he he's written that down. Uh, that paranoid, he, he, very <laughs> yeah. very much so. Um, it, wait, he said he had it on him. Yes, that that he rather than because he he seems to have these deranged notes about some being worried that someone is going to read his mind to try to steal it. So he fashioned a key that would be a mat a physical match of the actual key. Um, so that he could unlock it. Hmm. Um, do we remember just how eaten he was? Like, was the torso down the T-Rex's throat? Was it just the leg sticking out? It was just Uh, the leg sticking out. So of what else remains? We're going to have to cut it open. Chug, you're going in. We yeah, rub, I'll go in. I'll I'll yeah. bust out. We'll rub some. We'll rub some like seasoning on you, right? We yeah, we, we make you delicious. Like, tie a rope to your foot for security, and let's head you on in. Can you make copper delicious? Uh, in my Absolutely. experience, eating copper, I've I've only tried it once, but it it didn't go well, and it was never delicious. We can, uh, I, I I I can I can season you right up baste you with a nice thing i can uh, morale i'm i'm a little nervous about this idea i think it's a good plan i'm ready to go in <laughs> well very well <laughs> okay if if if, the, if you're okay with being eaten by a t-rex then i'm okay with watching it happen and taking notes hmm. yeah what do i have here so are you going to grease up chug Somehow and send Chug into the T Rex. Is this, this, is is this your plan? <laughs> I, I have this bottle of wine we could use, perhaps. <laughs> I, you, you know I'll I drink it and then I'll be pickled. Well, I, I, pickled I, I, robot in a red wine juice. <laughs> I pull out a jug from my cloak. I forgot I had this. Oh, you had the mayonnaise. <laughs> I can cover you with mayonnaise, and then you will be extra delicious. So. A mayonnaise uh, braise and with like a red wine. Uh, I, mm. I also this have sounds... honey. Or I don't can... understand food, but this sounds delicious. <laughs> well, I also I have an herbalism kit for spices. I also have one dose of blight ichor, which is a it's a maybe a maybe a bit of a psychedelic, but uh, it. <laughs> It may, uh, it may, you know, calm the beast as, uh... So we're going to pour... Should I do... Okay. Would you prefer honey or mayonnaise? What do you think... I, I start flipping through the notes on T-Rexes that are in this office, looking for some sort of clue as Ooh. to whether they prefer honey or mayonnaise. Why not I, both? I, 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 I mean, the, the basic seasoning... The, the the real truth of the ma- the matter is is that oil is the thing that you need to mm. really make sure. Can the alchemy jug do oil? It can do oil. It can do a quart of oil. All right. I'll <laughs> if I will oil up chug. We will season her Ooh. with your them. season them. Uh, uh, yeah, we will season them and toss them towards the T Rex. Hoping I, to be gobbled up whole. Or the suba leaf, which is a soothing tea. I could sprinkle some of that on there for a little flavor. We <laughs> have all sorts of weird herbs. No, no, sure. Really, I, have, I have a rope of, I have my, um, I have a rope of uh, climbing. So I can, uh, <laughs> so all right, can go ahead and tie them. that on. 
<laughs> now, the T-Rex's jaws may be capable of piercing your uh, I, metal exterior, so I would suggest uh, tucking and rolling into the throat. If perhaps you... I can climb up high and cannonball into the throat? Perhaps. I don't remember what if the room had. There's any. a balcony. It's a me- yep. the the bill the, the, the rotunda is, is a mez- has a mezzanine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is sounds a great like plan. a plan. You have to get it to roar right so that it'll be nice and open, and I'll cannonball in. Hmm. Very well. Hi. And do you do you want my uh, do you want my rope of climbing attached? Mm-hmm. Is that a, that's your ripcord just in case something goes awry? <laughs> I mean, what could. All right. I can't imagine what would go awry. No, you're you're quite the acrobat. This is going to be okay. Okay, uh, we'll we'll we're, we're rolling with this. We're rolling with this. Chug, <laughs> as as I'm as I'm oiling up, Chug. <laughs> I, I, I I say to them, Chug. I want you to know that if things go horribly wrong, I told you this was a bad idea, and you should have known better. Okay, as you're oiling me up, I, my skin sensors are so overloaded that I just don't even know what you're saying to me. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> oh okay, so I'll just, uh, I'm just going to pull, pull us onto another page here because I actually have the mez level. Um, nice. You, so this is the view from the, the mez, right? So you, you actually get up to the mezzanine uh, from in the entrance vestibule, the mm. stairs that went down go up. They go up to a library level, and then from the library, which is which is here, um, there's an entrance into the mez the the mez itself. And then so, hang the the mezzanine is then domed, and there's other um, flying creatures that are suspended. Um, there are skeletons, so there's a skeleton of, of a pterodactyl and several birds of prey that are all suspended up from above in the mezzanine. And so it's about a, f- it's the mezzanine itself is about forty feet up, uh, from from the lower lower level. So it's not outside the realm of jumping onto it. The T Rex itself is facing forward, so if you're trying to go right down the gullet and rip cord back out you're gonna need to get its attention somehow oh, i could put an arrow in its nose i could um also summon my familiar back and Ooh. have my familiar flap about we'll cover if the familiar minis. gets eaten <laughs> i can only use the alchemy jug once oh. per day and i've already used it for oil so unfortunately mm. we'll have to wait till uh tomorrow to um mayonnaise up my familiar and owl cyrus is not the most fond of mayonnaise unfortunately but the plan will have to do without i'm sure a tasty magical owl will be sufficient to get its attention unless you'd like to shoot it in the nose no i do I... have bagpipes <laughs> <laughs> Chuck, why do you have bagpipes <laughs> i enjoy the sound fair yeah <laughs> I would like to, uh, after, you know what, as we're delo- de- enjoying our Sunday of Triumph, I would like to hear you play those bagpipes. <laughs> um, do you want to play the bagpipes while I flap about with Owl Cyrus to just make it all a show? So awesome. let me recap to understand correctly what your plan <laughs> oh, is. Oh, you understand. <laughs> I want to make sure of this. Just, just so that we're on the same level of of uh, of madness here. Yeah. So you're gonna go up to the mezzanine level. Chug mm-hmm. is gonna break out their bagpipes, start playing the ba- bagpipes while Owl Cyrus goes flying in the face of the Tyrannosaurus Rex to hopefully rile the Tyrannosaurus Rex enough that it roars at you. And in the moment it roars, your plan is that Chug is going to leap off the mezzanine greased up in oil <laughs> with the <laughs> rope of climbing go down the gullet of the T-Rex hopefully pull the body <laughs> of uh, 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 of the um, <laughs> uh, uh, of yeah, pr- the professor, professor. Out, and then dot 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 uh, oh no we broke oh, no. Monty <laughs> the plan was too crazy <laughs> So, where were we? About to jump into a T-Rex's mouth, I believe. Alrighty. Alright. 
So says, says the guy who doesn't have to jump into the T Rex's mouth. The, yeah, yes, in, indeed, yes. indeed. All right. When last we left our heroes, they had concocted a plan. Okay. So the plan that you have to get the other straight is you're going to head up to the mezzanine level and you're going to use the alchemy jug to conjure a bunch of oil to basically grease up chug you're going to since been done okay <laughs> greasing has been done you're then going to take Mrowl's rope of climbing tie that around chug in such a way i guess you probably would have to tie the rope before you do the greasing yeah okay thinking and then you're going to get the attention of the t-rex uh the aptly named bernice by sending owl cyrus down to fly into its face while chug plays the bagpipes and once it's irritated and roars at you chug you're going to drop your bagpipes and leap into the tyrannosaurus's mouth so that you can recover the body mm -hmm. of professor Endry. is this correct this is correct. Of course I have to drop them. I don't want them ruined by the stomach acid. Okay. This sounds like a plan. <laughs> Let's see how it works out. Would you all like to get in position where you would like to uh, be for this little... Uh... I, I... Yeah. Yeah. And I'm thinking before these shenanigans start... Uh, where's the mouse? Is it where Chug is, or is it facing north or facing west? Um, it is currently, we'll say, it is facing the way that it is on the map, right? It is just not looking upward. Okay. I want to say what's the worst that could happen, but that's not my catchphrase. Okay. Are you ready? So yeah, as soon as uh, as soon as you're ready to leap, I want to uh, I want to give you the blessing of the Eladrin, uh, Chug. Okay. okay, I'm gonna have you all roll for initiative. Oh no. <laughs> yep. Nine. Okay. I got a four. Twenty-four. I'm too busy writing down this whole plan. Okay. All right. So if we um, jump into the mouth at the exact right moment, then of course this will work because. Uh, all right. Physics. Yeah. Physics. I just Rowl. write physics with my quill. Wow. You're you're uh, you're gonna do the blessing of the of the Aladrin mm -hmm. on Chug. All right, Chug. It's may your, your hunts be fruitful. May your weave. Be strong. May your hearth be filled with passion, warmth, and song. Two drops of holy water. I'm going to bless all three of us. Okay. What does this give us? Uh, you get a plus 1d4 on all your saving throws for the next minute on oh, the good. off chance that something may uh, require that. <laughs> and uh, plus 1d4 on all your attack rolls. Okay. Yeah. Attack rolls and... It's attack rolls and saving throws? Yeah. 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 And nice. so Chug... Magic attack too. Nice. The blessing is down. What do you start doing? I'm gonna bust out the pipes. All right, Osiris. Uh, Owl Cyrus, I snap my fingers, and Owl Cyrus pops up on my shoulder and looks at me grumpily with his owly beard. And I send him forth, and he flies at the T Rex and starts circling around, um, trying to like pluck at him, okay. not to do any damage, but to rile him up I, i'm gonna say yeah it, it's effectively like distraction or poking him in, in in some way that's great the t-rex rumbles and turns towards owl cyrus uh with a snap um and bites at owl, Cy at owl cyrus getting a 25 to hit oh <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not even going to look up my owl's stats. Yes. Okay. That, that <laughs> Cover your eyes, Momo. <laughs> there is basically the owl circles around. And in the moment that the owl is stationary, like right in front of the jaws of the T-Rex, there's just this kind of momentary like snap as the, the <gasps> dinosaur looms forward and just 
bites down, and you hear the snap, chomp, crack, poof. What did you do to my boy? And the the owl, uh, and there's a moment of realization as the as the T-Rex realizes that it's eaten a familiar, which is insubstantial once destroyed, and it sniffs, sniffs. It looks up, and it looks up towards the up towards the mezzanine, sees the three of you, and roars. It's time. It's go time. Um, I'm gonna also use my step of the wind for this. Okay. Jump. All right. Cannonball of the wind. <laughs> yeah, cannonball of the wind. This exactly. is a very acrobatic move. So I'm gonna have you roll me an acrobatics check uh, to see just how well Perfect. you swan ride. Because of your preparations, you have the rope. Who's holding the other end of the rope? Okay. You got the rope, the distraction, the grease, you can make this check with advantage. Woo. Okay, perfect. And acrobatics is my thing. Oh yeah, that's um 28. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. You leap down into the Tyrannosaurus's mouth and you're heading down its throat which could swallow you whole on a good day. And there inside its gullet are the fleshy remains of the professor of the of professor Endry. Grab hold of them. Mrowl, now it's over to you. We have a big uh, yank with my eight strength. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to rule that this is a effectively a grapple. As the dinosaur's mouth is starting Wait. to close down. Me versus a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I have Good an eight strength. <laughs> Fortunately, though, normally the dinosaur would have advantage on this check because it's huge. Instead, though, you guys have prepared the situation. And in a grapple, you can use acrobatics or athletics. So I'm going to allow you to use your choice of acrobatics or athletics and give you advantage on your check against Ooh. the the tyrannosaurus's strength all right acrobatics it is if i can swirl my tail and stuff to do this it helps oh and plus chug is probably uh right you're kicking off from the inside yeah, like absolutely a, kicking off from the like inside. a diver when they turn they do that underwater yeah, turn exactly i'm gonna that. i dive in i do a flip and i kick off the back of the stomach all right i'll take a 22 monty so unfortunately I rolled a natural 20 and my Tyrannosaurus has a, has a, has a, has a very high strength source. So I get it. So, uh, I, uh, so here's, here's what we got. As you go to pull, um, the jaws of the Tyrannosaurus Rex clamp shut on the magic rope. So it doesn't destroy the rope because the rope itself is magical and is resistant to the damage. So instead, Chug is inside the Tyrannosaurus Rex. How quickly this is can fine. We... <laughs> this is all part of the plan, you see. This is this is part of the plan. Um, this all in front of you. I'm going to turn it over to Osiris first. Uh, seeing the teeth chomp down, <laughs> I I pull out my magic quill, which if you did know it is a magic quill, it floats and hovers and is purple and glowing. And I'm going to cast a spell. And my goal with this spell is to obviously do what the spell does, but the <laughs> spell targets the creature's intelligence. And I'm hoping to kind of stupefy it into okay. a sense of open-mouthed awe. I'm going to cast Tasha's Mind Whip on the T-Rex. So my quill, you see it float into the air and it writes out a magical sigil that then flies towards the T-Rex. And it needs to make an intelligence saving throw. Okay. DC 17. As if it wasn't stupefied by our plan already. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> um, I get a negative 
three. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a natural one and I have a minus four. <laughs> so, so um, <laughs> I, the sigil appears, it smacks the T-Rex in the face, uh, doing 3d6 psychic damage, and uh, it can't take a reaction until the end of its next turn, and Ooh. on its turn, it must choose whether it gets to move, an action, or a bonus action, but can only do one of the three. Um, so yeah, that's I'm 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 dumbfounding it with my uh, intelligent text that I have written. Uh, okay, you slapped it with a sigil. <laughs> I slapped it with a sigil, and I do 12, 12 damage to it, and it is it is stupefied. Okay, the the Tyrannosaurus is deeply confused. Um, <laughs> it has a very full stomach. But uh, something going down its mouth. So what it starts to do is it's going to try to, like, regurgitate <laughs> somewhat. And so it it opens its mouth and goes. Ah, ah, ah. Um, and here's here's what what is, is going on. I'm going to say that. Um, Chug. You are going to take, because you're inside the dinosaur, mm -hmm. you're going to take 16 points of acid damage okay. from its guts okay. inside it. Um, and it's going to try to upchuck you. <laughs> so the question is, do you want to stay in or get out? Did you say 16 points? Yes. Uh, I don't know. I didn't know it was acidic on the inside. I should probably get out. <laughs> <laughs> so if you... If you uh, so it's gonna try to up, like, basically barf you up. And the question is, do you want to stay in or stay out? Uh, did I get what I need? Was I able to grab? The... Oh yeah, you got it. You got it. Okay, then I'll I'm out. Okay. If, the barf though, I want to do a tuck roll and like land really cool. Okay, give me an acrobatics check. All right, that was twenty five. Acrobatics okay. is my thing. So the T Rex just kind of. Uh, evacuates the contents of its gullet, which b sends Chug and the other remains of several giant half-man, half-rat things out of its gullet and onto the floor in front of you. Um, and so, Chug, you are able to land uh, s gracefully on your feet, and you are not prone. Uh, and you have the lower torso of uh, the um, the professor. So it ends at his chest. <laughs> there's a hand and a um, there's his arms are on the ground um, and there's his upper part of his body but where the head and the shoulders are is not amongst what's been thrown up. And in the midst of all, all this, um, the dinosaur rumbles and um, that is its turn. So I'm going to go to the top with Mrow. All right. So Chug is down, down at floor, at floor at level. Floor level. Yep. Um, and but still attached to the rope, a rope of climbing, correct? Yeah, how fast can I make that thing move? I might, uh, probably not fast enough. So, oh, right, so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use my it only goes 10 feet. Uh, it's supposed to, I'm gonna use as a bonus action. I'm gonna, wow, you know, when cats kind of get all angry and they they puff up and they, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they so I started. <laughs> anything and puff up and i actually puff up to large size so i'm gonna <laughs> use my uh giant's might as a bonus action and become large size uh which gives me advantage on strength checks and, str and strength uh saving throws so i'm using my uh my rune knight giant's might so i, I get huge and then want to just yeah, hoist uh chug up as fast as i can on the rope um 
to get them up over the edge of the yeah, balcony. Yeah, and because it's a magical rope of climbing, I'm going to say that, yes, spending your action to do that, you can just real chug right back up. And you now become a large-sized creature, correct? Wow. <laughs> there we go. Um, the T-Rex is furious. Um, and Chug, you've been pulled back up, uh, up top. Uh, what would you like to do? Shouldn't we just leave? <laughs> we have, we have, we have what we need. Let's Professor go. Professor Andrew. Yeah. Well, we don't actually know if we have what we need, but we have part of him, but it might. He said the key was on him, right? That was yeah, we don't have all of him. Can I, can I, like, as I a bonus action, neck. pat this body down to see? Yeah, if it you, you can see that on the body are not one, not two, but three keys on a ring on his belt. There are okay, three. I'm, I'd like to grab the ring off of the belt and mm -hmm. then throw the body back at the T Rex. <laughs> Uh, the T-Rex snaps up the body uh, um, quite quickly and swallows it, satisfied, and heads back to its pedestal. <laughs> Chug. I did not expect that to work. It worked. The plan worked. It all went, again, again, astounding. <laughs> Team. Execution. Every time we come up with a plan, I swear we're going to die, and we never have. And so, I deem that even the most ridiculous plans performed by the more intelligent people will always prevail. <laughs> wow. Sure, performed by the most intelligent people. I, I, I account for myself being the intelligence of this entire operation, and therefore, uh, the plan worked because of my superior intellect. All right, let's get moving. Let's get moving. We got to go find the... <laughs> I'm fascinated by this T-Rex, though. It's and, and yeah, again, you're, right, you're... Another key, another key. We've already left. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm like there talking and you guys are leaving the room. And like I'm as like... soon as you started saying superior intellect, I just took a swig and walked away. <laughs> I turn around. I'm alone in the in the room. I'm like, oh, oh, it's it's again, again. Yeah, they're okay. they're 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 already on the lower level of the rotunda, <laughs> and you're still up there. And they're like, coming. <laughs> oh, right. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I got carried away again with my uh, my thoughts. And I, I, so I, just... I give uh, I give Chug a big uh, hearty pat on the shoulder. And, well done, friend. And cast. Careful, uh, careful. I'm rusty. Cure cure I'm wounds. Corrosion. Oh, okay. On that, the, that uh, we'll get rid of my corrosion. Well, seven I, seven points. <laughs> I mean, okay, better than nothing. I use prestidigitation to make your corrosion Ooh. not there, but you're still hurt. But still a little damage. Yeah, yeah. But you're no longer dirty and covered in in T Rex goo. Oh, uh, Chug, I should mention since you're unfamiliar with uh, meat creatures. Um, the interior of most creatures' stomachs is acidic. It could could be a problem in the future if we do decide to do this sort of thing again. Mm. Annie's. Well, you know, I'm made of copper. I can uh, stand it for at least a little bit. I can see that, and you did splendid. <laughs> so to the antiquities swing? Antiquities. My favorite. Alrighty. So you head across the hall. Um, I'm giving the T-Rex a wide berth <laughs> as you as you walk across um, towards the Hall of Antiquities, where Professor Tazana uh, did her work. This is another large hallway uh, of similar um, arrangement to the hall. Uh, of the gallery. However, unlike the gallery uh, level, um, the there's no internal walls to hold portraits mm -hmm. here. So again, it's it's a large rectangular room with curved top and bottom in the, in the north end. And all the windows in here, again, the curtains have been drawn on them uh, so that the artifacts are preserved and the room is lightly lit with dancing lights of candles floating in the air. The 
the light level is quite dim in here. It's almost like mood lighting. If you've ever gone into, uh, again, if you've been, when, when you go into a museum where there's precious artifacts, mm. often the light levels are, are lower to k- prevent damage from the sun. In this chamber, there is the palpable smell of dust and embalming fluids. That, that acrid odor that hits your your nostrils. Um, for in this chamber are arranged um, several large stone plinths with glass cases set over top of them. And within each are all manner of um, artifacts of elven manufacture. Um, each then has a small card uh, beside it, labeling it and explaining what the artifact is. And so as you come into the room, um, the first sort of plinth here has several elven vases um, with fake flowers placed in them. <laughs> and and um, Raoul, you, you quite, you, you laugh and you go, elves would never use those kind of flowers in those just, just no it's completely historically inaccurate and a gross example of cultural appropriation in fact it's offensive um but nonetheless the specimens are uh, of the vases themselves uh some of them are cracked and damaged and so the pieces have been arranged out showing them um and one of the vases um there there's the card on the side speculates the the meaning of the vase but the main piece of art on each of these vases are several scenes of groups of elves uh bringing uh walking through a portal Hmm. um so there's this massive the the artwork depicts this large portal uh upon a massive stone plinth um and groups of elves um all huddled in robes and many of them carrying babies or children or uh, packs on their clothing all uh, walking out of or into these portals. Well, these relics belong in a museum. Uh, Raoul, we are in a museum. No, a real museum. <laughs> I mean, I agree. The, 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 as, a, as an elf, uh, and I'm... I, I, we should I walk, steal all of them. I walk into the room and I start ripping the flowers out of these vases and throwing them on the <laughs> Aren't floor. Are they under glass? Aren't they... Are they yes, they are under glass? glass. They're under glass. Hmm. Be a shame if a warforged accidentally broke the glass. That would be a shame. <laughs> and I look around. I don't see one here that would do that, though. <laughs> the way that these are kept is, is atrocious. This is horrible. And and, and these depictions, these examples are, 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 are terrible compared to the Illyrian Museum that I worked in. The far better. Hmm. Raoul, were you trying to suggest that I break the glass? Well, you know, these uh, these would be better served in a real museum. I punch the glass. (laughs) The glass shatters. Ah, um, Much better. Exposing the artifacts underneath. Now I start plucking out the flowers and throwing them on the ground. (laughs) Um, Elsewhere in the room... Uh, north of you, you can see um, that there are the the next pedestal, actually also under glass, has five elven skulls mm-hmm. beneath, beneath it. There are several, there's a statue of a strange, fiendish looking creature here uh-uh. and one of an elven of, a, uh, of an elven woman here. Um, one of an elven warrior Uh, and one of an elven priest and you can see that the exhibits to the to the south here there's there's an elven uh thin blade on display here and several bows several more bits of cooking tools and then there it looks like to the south end of the room there is this large astrolabe or sundial whereas at the north end of the room uh there are several elven sarcophagi and on on a in on a glass pedestal um there is a um elven mummy and underneath the glass cuddled up beside the mummy 
is Professor Tazana. Does she look alive? Um, <laughs> I mean, if your skin's supposed to be cracked and wrinkled like that, that might constitute as being alive. Uh, but all the color is seeped out of her flesh um, and her skin, rather than having the um, the vitality of life to it, is more like cracked stone um, and deadened flesh. Uh, her hair, a tangled mass of more like um, just just a messy sponge than and anything else. Her uh, her clothing is in quite normal condition. Uh, there's no damage to the glass, though. She's just inside the... cuddled up with the mummy. Hmm. I have heard that flesh beings frequently use moisturizers when their skin becomes like this. Perhaps we should oil her. I, I suppose I still have some oil. I didn't use it all all on the T-Rex stunt, so um, yes, we, she we could apply oil. Breathing? I, uh, I'm going to walk up to the glass. As I do, I mumble some obscenities about the Elven, uh, the condition <laughs> of the Elven uh, hi historical uh, artifacts and the way that they've been kept, and you can hear me just mumbling <laughs> sounds. Don't worry, we'll steal them all. Don't worry. <laughs> And I, I approach the glass and I look down and I'm going to knock on the glass. <laughs> um, you knock on the glass uh, and as you get closer, you can see that uh, the um, Tazana's eyes are closed. Um, but when you knock on the glass, the mummy's eyes oh. open. Uh, the wrong one has opened its eyes. <laughs> you knocked on the wrong side. Oh. <laughs> I go back to... I apologize. It, it, the, uh, the, it looks at you dead in the eyes, and the jaw slowly cracks, and the, oh. you can see the mouth form into a, uh, into a disapproving scowl of a frown. I, I seem to have upset it. Uh, perhaps I can... Um, <laughs> Uh, perhaps I can lure it back to sleep with my honeyed words. Uh, dear mummy, sleep well. We mean you no harm. Uh, carry on. Uh, <laughs> Not um, good. The, I hate to hear your unhoneyed words. <laughs> uh, the the mummy um, begins to move its arms. Oh. It seems to be moving. <laughs> And, so as, start talking. <laughs> and as as it does so, it opens its mouth and it begins to mouth and you can hear underneath it, it is beginning to encant a spell. Oh no. I use silence? I don't have silence. Um, um I, you can I'm make an arcana to... check okay. to determine what spell it's casting. It's you're, you're getting a mummy's curse. I had nothing uh, to do with this. <laughs> 22. It's casting telekinesis. Uh oh. Oh, that's not that bad. And as it ca finished casting the spell, Daggers. it lifts the glass case up above it and holds it in the air. And as the as the telekinetic as it holds the telekinetic case in the air, it starts to stand up. Uh, can I back away? Am I able to back away, or is it too late? Um, and Osiris, you are an elf, correct? Yes. The, the mummy turn, turns to you and it says, brother, what has happened? I immediately start flipping through my book and I'm like, oh man, how many brothers did I have? Which was one of them mummified in Drakenheim? <laughs> um, oh, he's an elf. He's an elf. I sorry. Salutations of greeting. We are. Uh, we are. Uh, what are we? Uh, chug, chug. What are we? We are this the mummy oilers. Ah, the, yes, we're the, the uh, flesh oilers, the moisturizers. The the elf. Um, the elf of elf, elf speaks, and and says, 
you walk with a forged one and a tabaxi. You must be a mighty lord indeed to have such brave and valiant allies at your side. You know, I've never been one for uh, lordships. I, I'm a scholar, if you will, um, which I think is more important than lords who uh, just think they rule everything, when really it's us intelligent folk who keep the gears running in the background. So a scholar I am much more powerful than any lord. And these are my friends who journey with me to fulfill the historical duties of a scholar such as myself. The elf, He's humble. The, the uh, elven mummy speaks. Mm. A mighty triumvirate you are indeed. That... Tell me, how long has it been since we left Arcadia. Uh, as, as it's talking, I'm kind of like looking at it side to side, writing notes in my book. Uh, since we left Arcadia. Um, do, okay, as an elf, do I know what? So. History is your jam, right? As, I mean, history is my jam. As, as, as an elf, um, historian, for you an elf to historian. not know Arcadia uh, would be uh, uh, absurd, but even a, a Cyrus, you know that Arcadia is not a thing that elves talk about anymore. Hmm. And so that this elf is the first thing that the elf is asking you about is Arcadia is a sign that he is very ancient. Yeah, uh, roughly how long has it been since Arcadia was uh, became taboo? Your parents, parents, parents were the last ones that would have talked about it. Like this is this is the type of thing of like, you know. This is where, like, you know that this is where we came from, but people don't, but elves don't talk about it anymore. Uh, dear elven mummy lord, um, I, I must admit, I, I will try to put this as delicately as possible. It's been multiple thousands of years and you are dead and here in a museum. Was that lightly? Did I put that? Hmm. Well put, my lord. Well put. Yep. A frown comes over the mummy's face. Uh, Morale, would you like to talk to to it? It 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 says it it's it looks at, at itself and it looks at you and says, "You, we get. What do you mean?" What do you uh, mean? Uh, Thousands of years. Arcadia's gone. How are you animated right now? Is is it, is it magic? It's fascinating. It's fascinating. The um, the mummy howls oh. and screeches out um, a maddening scream. Um. And it, it just, and the the noise that comes out of it is a wail of despair. It's like the wail that you would expect to hear from someone who has just come home to see their house burn down. Mm. I thought we were having a nice conversation, and now you're screaming. Is everything all right? Oh, Cyrus, we need to work on your bedside manner. <laughs> I have no bedside manner. Who needs? Who has time for bedside manner? Get to the point. That's the point of a conversation. I am a construct, and I made time for bedside manner. <laughs> and as the howl emanates out from it, you feel this tangible force of negative energy oh. um, uh, whirl out through the air. Um, and 
the the effect of this is is temporary like it's a fleeting moment but it, it's almost like any sort of vitality could not enter into the area around it as as it howls out like this um and it uh the the mummy itself shudders a- 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 afterwards and and says gone gone why am i still here i asked myself the same thing about you not mm-hmm. about me i know why i'm here um meanwhile uh tazana's body is just on the ground now <laughs> Oh, it fell off the thing. Yeah, as as the like the mummy just completely disregarded it. Um. Ah, as I said, ah, uh, salutations of greeting, Mister Mummy. Well, how should we address you, oh despairing one? That is bef- that is sufficient. All right. Well, great despairing lord. I am not myself anymore. Ah, My world you... is gone. I am despair now. Ah, however, I have good news for you. Yes. What is your good news? What did you enjoy in life? Mm. I enjoyed... I remember. I enjoyed conquest. Battle. My sword. And he points to the blade. Bring me my sword. Right away. And the great news is there are trolls. A king of the trolls has arisen who needs slaying. Conquest awaits you. Yes, indeed. Uh, it is. Uh, this world is ripe for conquest, in fact. Mm, You've been just saving your energy for millennia. This is, it'll be a delightful time to be conquesting about. True. Here. True. Um, yes. yes which, which blade is yours? We will, uh, we will he fetch point, it up. He points to the, the, the sword that was on, on the other display rack. Right. So, uh, we'll, we'll get right to that. Uh, we'll, so, how about reading? Did you enjoy reading, perhaps? Mm. Yes. Oh, good. Good. Reading got- plans for battle. Stories of defeated foes. Hmm. Well, here's the good news. There have been thousands and thousands and thousands of years of military knowledge that have built up. Excellent. Since the you tell have- me, have we other? Tell me, brother elf, hmm. where do you rule from? Oh, um, hmm. Well, I work at the Illyrian Historical Library in the Department of Lost He rules with his Lore iron mind! And magical All tricks. fail before him! No sh- sh- I'm trying yes. to be humble over no. here. <laughs> I'm the greatest sorcerer, or I'm the greatest wizard and mind in Illyria. And I rule the Museum of Illyria with an iron fist? Yes. Yes, um, and my job is to document and find rare artifacts alluding to the history of our world and make sure that they are properly taken care of. And used for conquest! And used for... I've never used it. Yes, oh, this decimating all the folks starting with the trolls. Okay, I'm going to have the two of you roll me... D- is this the Performance? Session? Yeah, per- give me performance for for sure for, from um, Raoul, uh, and give me persuasion from from you, uh, um, uh, oh, good luck. Osiris. Yeah, C- can I be rummaging through the body that fell off the thing while they're distracting the mummy? Yeah, yeah. I want to search it. I got a uh, I got a net twenty, which gives me a modified twenty eight. I got a fourteen, which means I got a thirteen. <laughs> the a, a grin comes upon the, the, the mummy and um, Chug, as you turn over the body of Tazana, 
Um, she has um, actually right on her her person, just going going through her. She has one of the the archive keys right on her. I'll take that. And the the mummy w- wakes up and and, it, it, and as you take the key, the the mummy speaks. Mm, yes, we will need a mighty force. Tell me, brother elf, how many soldiers do you command? Uh, at least two. Yes, but if words are power. He commands tens of thousands. Indeed, of research assistant. I, I can see you are an uh, <laughs> you can you are an honored warrior. For with you walks a great tabaxi warrior and bard, and a mighty, mighty construct, bestow clearly bestowed up to. Uh, so to fight alongside you as a great guardian. A machine of war. Indeed. In, in, in my experience, it's less about the number and more about the efficiency. And to mm. tell you that a small team can be marvelous, marvelously infi- efficient is an understatement. I have seen the... I have seen my companions dive into the mouths of danger and come out with prizes unknown. Uh, this is true. It happened just a few minutes ago. Mm. Mm. But here's what we're thinking. We have, there is a library of knowledge waiting just on the other side of this wall for you. With books, all the books you need to be well learned in this modern era. Right? Quite the collection, uh, as well mm. as uh, manuals of military stratagem and the like. We could just uh, direct you to that. You just, you know, don't do anything until you've read all these books because a lot has changed in the world since you've been uh, dormant. Mm. So you need to really catch up and read every single book all the way through to really know your foe. Indeed, indeed. The the mummy turns to the other sarcophagi in the body of Tizana oh, no. and says, yes, you have a great a force of your own brother elf. I must raise my own, and from here we will go out, and we will conquer this new world. And it, it, he turns to Tizana and says, and and he goes to pick up her body and lay it on the on the pedestal, um, and says, then looks over to one of the statues that has onyx gems for eyes, and says. And he still has telekinesis. So he reaches out and telekinetically pulls the black onyx gem over and lifts and begins lifting up the uh, the lids of the sarcophagi of the other elves. Uh, and he says, give me one moment. I will raise these companions. They will not have the minds that they did in life, but they will be great warriors instead. Our conquest begins here and now. We'll start with the library. You gotta read every tome and then... Friends, I don't think we can let a mummy on the loose in this city raising an army because there is a lot of dead in this city. Oh, and it could, it could raise an army that could prove problematic for Westamar, Illyria, Caspia, the, the whole world, really. So, um... Any ideas? Do we do we battle a mummy, or do we uh, like if we leave it to its devices? Have we woken it up now? Is it going to take over the? I Is got the pro- key. Yes, but we may have just started a possible problem that could lead to the end of many things. Is this something that we need to address, or should we just leave it be and hope that the mummy doesn't go anywhere? Well, there's a lot of books to read. True probably in a variety of languages, it will need to learn the languages before it reads the books. Why don't we come back and kill it later? Very well. <laughs> I mean, it's a terrible, but like, are we in any shape to kill a mummy? I've sure never killed are. a mummy before. <laughs> as long as we stop it from raising some of these others. That's as long saying. as we stop her raising some of these others. We either act before it raises anything or we get the heck out of here. It it, it it's telekinetically lifted the, the bodies of the, the other elf mummies and has laid them out. And as it finishes the telekinesis spell, it says, I will only need a moment. And 
What if you run it through with its own sword, Chug? <laughs> sure, I'll do it. I think, right? Is, is it holding its sword? No, it's over on the uh, wall. If you, it, it, it did ask you to bring its sword back to it, but I don't think anyone got it for no it. Way. I'll go yeah. get the sword. Yeah, stab it in the heart with the sword. I'm pretty sure that's how you kill a mummy, right? I've... I was not in charge of the mummy department in our museum, and I actually have never fought a mummy, only um, written loosely about the history of them. So, so I am not thinking twice. I am just going to run over, grab the sword, and try to run the mummy through. <laughs> All right. Good plan. Um, Good plan. Let's what? roll for initiative. <laughs> I trust Mral. Mral said to do it. <laughs> I I don't know if any of my ideas were good here. Oh no, there's an initiative roll. 23. I got a 23 also. Woo! Oh, I, I got a three. If, uh, okay. If you let me go first, I can bless us again. Sure. Uh, I'm assuming our the blessed war off has been more than a minute. Sure. Alrighty. And then so you can... what do we got what do we got going around for initiative again? Uh, I got a I twenty-three. Got... Chug? Okay. Osiris? Uh, I got a three. Okay. And I also got a twenty-three. And I am going to go first. Okay. Okay. So um I will set the set the scene for for you here. Um, the mummy has turned away from the three of you as it's starting to cast create undead on the oh bodies boy. before it. Um, and so, um, as Chug, you go and get the sword, and you're bringing it towards. So the mummy thinks you're just bringing the sword. So I'm gonna give you Chug. You can make one deception check as opposed by my insight check. And if you win that check, I'm going to give you surprise. But yes. just you. Okay. Mm. So that's not awesome. I got a seven. <laughs> Unfortunately, as you come up and you draw the sword back to stab it, the, the, the mummy's about to like thank you for bringing him, him his sword. And he says... Rachel! Um, and so there will be no surprise, but Mra so Mral, you're going to act first then uh, ahead of Chug. Okay. So as, as he, uh, as the mummy cries out, traitor, um, Mral, you are first to go then. May your hunts be fruitful. May your weave be strong. May your hearts be filled. Your passion, warmth, and song. <laughs> it's magic. Weave the, you know. also your mittens. So because you don't get cold. You know. so the winter. Oh, cold you said weave. Yeah, you weave. That's not what I heard. Uh, well, <laughs> whatever you heard, it's in your heart. So, uh, I'm going to send me three, three drops of holy water to bless all three of us. Because um, nice. we might need it. Nice. Uh, and then I will, uh, once you can start that deep, uh, that, that deep cat <laughs> growl and puff up. Puff, it's a big, uh, super large morale size. And then I want to, I want to basically. Uh, get as far back uh, away from this guy as I can in a nice spot where I can shoot unobstructed. Like that. Alrighty. So the mummy spends his first legendary action. Oh. And. The, the way he uses it is with the, the momentary distraction, he doesn't have the power now and the time to finish casting Create Undead. So he uses the legendary power to grab onto the last threads of the spell and push the remaining energy to more quickly resuscitate uh, the creatures that he was conjuring. So rather than uh, summoning uh, his minions as whites, they're only going to get up as zombies. <laughs> and that includes poor Professor Tazana uh, as, as well. Um, so sh uh, she's brought up as one of, one of the zombies. With that, Chug, you're up. Uh, okay, so 
Um, I'm just gonna go for it on this mummy lord. I'm gonna attack with the quarter staff. And you get a plus d one d four on all your attack rolls. Uh, well, it's it's gonna be very high. That's a twenty nine. Woo! A twenty. Okay, yeah. There's not much I can do about that. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, the, the quarter staff. Okay. So that's ten. And I'd like to do Flurry of Blows. Go for it. Um, first one, that's a 15. Second with a 1d4 one. on each Oh, one. no, that was not with it. Okay, yeah, so... Yeah. What did I say? 15. All right, that's a 19 now. Yes. And uh, 22. <laughs> so uh, that was four attacks total. All of the uh, Three. Three, okay. Uh... Uh, so the in total, all three hit. So the first one was a six. The second one is an eight, and the third one is also a six. Okay, so that's a total of twenty points of damage, and the, and the, your your uh, weapon attacks are magical, correct? Because you're yes, a monk? they are. Yeah, great. Mm-hmm. Great. Uh, anything else, Jug? Um. I'm going to use my drunken technique to kind of just bob out of the way and disengage. Okay. Uh, where would you like to move to? Um, so which one of these is the mummy lord? Is it this guy? This one here. Okay. So if I was probably like here, I'm going to go here. Uh, great. Okay. So with that, um, it is the... Uh, the mummy's turn. Oh, oh Cyrus. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, st- I'm still like trying to take in all of this and writing it down. Okay. Um, so, Osiris mm-hmm. uh, um, and, Mar- and, and the, the mummy lord see, uh, looks at you um, and sees um, and, and says, this mechanical beast has betrayed us, brother. Come, we shall slay them together for their insolence. And, Brilliant. And he, um, and he turns uh, to move, uh, and in so doing, he moves over here and fires a lightning bolt right oh. through Chug and Morale. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Dexterity saving throws. And remember, oh, you get a plus 1d4 because of the bliss. 15. 15. 19. Uh, the 19 saves. Unfortunately, the 15 does not. So the total there is uh, ooh, uh, 28 points of electrical damage or halved from Raoul because it's a successful save. 14. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, as a reaction, I would like to uh, cast Absorb Elements. Okay, it turns it, uh, halves it down, once more. Down to a 6, and then I get an extra 1d6 on my uh, lightning damage on my next attack. Nice. Mm-hmm. Osiris, it's your turn. All right. Um, if I scamper, is... is- does the mummy think that we're not enemies right now? The mummy thinks that you're still on on his side because you haven't taken any hostile action against him yet. Wonderful. Uh, in that case, can I disengage without it getting... Or yeah. not disengage, yeah. but can I run away without it getting yeah. an opportunity attack? Awesome. I run back and I take out my quill and I draw a sigil in the air and the sigil floats over the middle of them and then explodes with synaptic static. Okay. (laughs) Intelligent saving throws. Yes. Okay, so I don't think my mummy... What's your saving throw, DC? 17. I don't think the zombies physically can make that safe. (laughs) (laughs) Even if they roll a 20. Um, Actually, yeah, they, they, they cannot. Uh, but the uh, the mummy lord absolutely can. 
Uh, so he fails, but I'm going to use my legendary resistance to, oh. to succeed automatically. That's fair. I'm going to roll a bunch of dice. Oh. All right, that was half of the dice. That's a lot of dice. Uh, I do 33 damage on 8d6. Wow. Uh, the the psychic energy ruptures the zombies and destroys them, um, unbinding the threads that hold them to unlife entirely. Uh, but the mummy is uh, unperturbed by, by it. Uh, you, with legendary power is flowing into his body, uh, and he resists the energy. Uh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, at, did he did he take any damage? He does. He takes half okay. damage because it's a successful save, but he doesn't have the the extra yeah. the extra damage. Uh, the mummy is going to uh in response to your betrayal. Uh -oh. Um. Is uh, um. Oh yeah. Okay is going to use um, one of his legendary actions uh, to cast a spell. Um, it, it's just going to be a cantrip, uh, and he's going to hit you with Chill Touch, Osiris, uh, getting a 23 to hit. Yeah, that does it. Okay. Uh, Osiris, that is going to be uh, 20 points of necrotic damage. Whoa! Which... Okay, that's tough. I believe in you. I'm, I'm okay. Um, Osiris gets hit and tries to shake it off like it was a minor nuisance. We go back to the top with Morale. All right. I'm going to... Do I have a clean shot from here or are these guys in my way? Do I need to move? You got a clean shot. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to take the, uh, take the attack. Actually, I get two attacks. Well, that's going to be a miss. But, oh, so or, uh, maybe a plus 10 yet. Actually, maybe it's a hit. No, 15? The 15, unfortunately, is a miss. Okay, but the other one's a 29. Okay, that is a hit. All right, so I have... So there's the two arrows. The, the first arrow, it just sails right through his undead body without actually hitting anything of substance but the second arrow uh crashes into uh kind of uh and sends bone and rib shattering out forward so i have just a insane litany of of dice here so it's the, <laughs> the base arrow is da plus four so base arrow is four points of uh no sorry six plus four ten points of piercing damage Mm -hmm. And I want to use one of my walloping arrows. So he has to make a DC 10 strength check or get knocked prone. But uh, he succeeds that. Nah, jerk. Yeah. How much damage uh, is it for the arrow? That, so there was 10 piercing for the arrow. Okay. Then I'm using, I'm marking him as my favored foe. Okay. Which gives me an additional D1. Cool. Um, just and, before you add that damage, yeah. favored foe requires your concentration. So do you want to give up bless to put on favored foe? Um, no, I would rather, I'd rather keep my, um, I'd rather keep my friends, uh, I'd rather bust, bust okay, everybody. Okay, cool. All right, so then, uh, I'm going to use my, I, the discharge, the lightning that I caught with absorb elements. So four points of lightning. Nice. My dreadful strikes as a, uh, fey wanderer, I get an additional four points of psychic damage. Ooh. Uh, I'm... Currently enlarged with my giant's might, so that gives my weapon attacks an additional d6. So, ooh, six damage there. Uh, I am, I am gonna discharge my fire rune, which is my rune knight <laughs> ability, for uh, an additional seven points of fire damage. Okay, uh, which uh, seems to have done double damage against the mummy. Oof. Uh. And how much, how, well, how does he, what sort of state does he, he look like? Uh, um, 
he is a he, he is heavily damaged by the, this slavo uh and is uh bloodied which is under half hit yeah. points yeah um all right chug is uh chug is up next right and still blessed all right so then i will i will throttle back and i'll just come over i want to run over this way to get out of his uh so he can't hit us all with lightning again okay uh, at the end of your turn, he's going to use his legendary action to fire another chill touch at you, uh, getting a critical hit. Oof. All right, I'm going to, in response, I would like to use my, uh, what is it, my cloud rune? Okay. Reaction, which is, he's within 30 feet. Oh, I can't do it. He's 35 feet. Never mind. I'm going to enjoy this chill touch. It's going to be 8d8 points of damage. So that's uh, gonna be. Ooh. Are you? Are you? Can you? Can you handle that? Yeah. Because unless it's unless I can't. I have some <laughs> tricks, but I don't. I don't want to use my tricks on it. I I, sh- I should be okay if if he doesn't like max out. Uh, I'm regretting using my. Uh, it's uh, it's fifty two points of damage. All right, I, I'm I'm up. <laughs> And you can, because uh, I should say, Chill Touch also prevents you from regaining hit points. Don't forget, if you're hit by it. Yeah, I'm I'm here for now. <laughs> okay, all right. I uh, should have saved the- my absorb elements. <laughs> all right, Chug, you're up. Uh, how how bad does Mral look? Uh. Well, it, you know, Morale's fur single digits is 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 already white but there's specks of gray to morale's fur that are not gray anymore but also white now <laughs> and how does the mummy lord look uh wounded damaged it's haggard but it's still standing okay all right well i'm gonna attack um oh i have to make a concentration. the first one is a 17 and i'm gonna do the flurry of blows okay the 17 is a miss i'm afraid oh no uh still gonna flurry of blows okay uh so the first one's a 22 that's a hit and the second one is a 19 also a hit good um and then i'm gonna also stunning strike but I'll, i'll do the damage first okay so the first damage is an eight and the second one is a seven okay so 15 total so the for the stunning strike i'm spending a key point to try to stun him it's a con save dc 14 okay uh i get a 17 (laughs) okay well um in that case uh gonna do the patient defense and spend another key point to dodge okay works for me all right okay so seeing you all uh line uh and then at the end of your turn um chug uh because you've moved in uh to attack you you don't have reach or anything you moved right up to attack and are staying uh base to base Mm mm-hmm okay um he is going to reach out with shocking grasp, uh, getting a twenty-four to hit. Can I counterspell that? The shocking grasp? Yeah, you can. I'm I'm just gonna counterspell that. Okay, cool. I need I need I need our fists in the game. Yes, uh, you yeah, I did I just, dodge. Oh uh, yeah, like are you okay? Should I counterspell or like I don't know. I don't know how damaged everybody is. I know that um, morale. I'm one hit away from death. Like sh- maybe I should save my counterspell for that. I don't know. He, he, well, I've got, I'm missing a couple of screws. I got some dents in me, but I'm not like I'm not down yet. Okay. Um, what's it gonna be? You you have how much? You have a bit of HP left. Mm-hmm. You know what? I'm going to counterspell it. I'm going to counterspell it. Okay. Okay. It's just gone. It's just done. I don't want anybody else getting hurt. Okay. Osiris right. is going to protect his friends. Okay. 
The mummy lord uh, turns to the uh, the your your group here, and seeing you in a lovely, nice little cone, is going to cast fear. Um, so with fear, uh, it is a cone of fear. So you can all make a, uh, and just this primal howl as he cast the spell. Uh, and you can all make a wisdom saving throw. I should have probably saved my counter spell eh, for that. <laughs> Turns out. And, and we get a D four added well, onto our saving I'm throw. assuming my, my concentration got obliterated when I took yeah, 52 it, points a day. Yeah, it would have been a DC 25. <laughs> Cost. All right. Yeah. <laughs> no, no D4. Uh, four. What are we saving? What is this? Wisdom? Yeah. Oof. I got an 18. I got a 17. And Rao? 12. Osiris. Warforged, be afraid. Osi Osiris, you succeed. 18 yes. was what you were looking for. Okay. Yeah, I was I, actually wondering that, uh, Kelly. I, I know I'm immune to charm and like a couple of other things, but I don't think fear. Hmm. Yeah. It, it, uh, so with with the fear effect, um, on when it gets to your turn, um, because you are for, uh, under the under the the fear spell, um, you uh, can while you're frightened, you have to take the dash action and move away from the uh, the mummy. Uh, on your turn um, and if you end your turn where you cannot see the mummy you can then make a saving throw to end the fear but with that Osiris you have st stayed steadfast it is your turn sir um, can you cast a bonus action spell as an action no no it has to be a bonus action uh, what do you want to do uh, so I have the ability to manifest my spell book into a sentient being that can then cast spells for me. But then I wanted it to cast a bonus action spell, but it's a bonus action to create um, the spell book thing. Yeah, so I was yeah, yeah, you're, you're kind of bone there. Okay, for... then I will go with plan B. And still, so Osiris yells out, I'm not letting anybody else get hurt today. And then he flees out of the room. <laughs> okay. And leaves his spell book behind, sitting on the ground. And the spell book starts to like blow in a magical wind and it opens up and then lifts up. And the spell book is now floating around and it grows like these magical eyes. <laughs> and uh, it is now my um, manifested mind of my spell book. So it can see in here and I can cast some spells through it. Okay. Um, and it is going to cast let's see here. I like that we have to run from the mummy to the Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm going to cast I'm gonna have uh, this little th this green thing be your uh, your spell book. Okay, great. Uh, so yes, I'm going to cast. Uh, let's see. Oh boy. Oh no. I should have brought more damagey spells. I'm going to cast Tasha's Mind Whip again. Okay. On the mummy. All right. Uh, intelligence saving throw. Yes. Um, I get a 15. That is not enough. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to use my legendary resistance for this one. Ah. Uh. Uh, that's going to be 15 more damage. Okay. I do have to make a constitution saving throw to keep concentrating on the fear, which I succeed as well. Mm. Uh, but yes, now... Uh, you can't you can't take a reaction and on your next turn you have to either move action or bonus action but only one okay okay I can live with that um but I can still take legendary actions correct uh, it doesn't say anything about legendary actions so it just says on its next turn it must choose whether it gets a move an action or a bonus action it only gets one of the three 
Okay, so I uh, am going to assume then that I can take uh, legendary actions. Uh, so the mummy is going to attack um, Chug with its rotting fist, uh, getting a 20 to hit. That hits. Alrighty. That is going to be um, 10 points of bludgeoning damage. And another 10 points of necrotic damage. Uh, and you need to make a, a... Now, you are cursed with mummy rot. But oh, you're a warforged. And yeah. I get cursed with mummy rot? I, gotta I say, feel like I can't. It's mummy rust for you. <laughs> but it's like a flesh thing. It's a flesh Yeah, yeah but but uh, but I here's what I like to think. With a mummy's touch, all is dust. And Ooh. Warforge turned oh, to dust okay, just rusty. as yeah, just as easily. So yes, it is like is a, it a disease. Uh, no, it's not. It's a curse. Oh, it actually nuts. is a curse. Yeah, yeah, you are immune to disease. You don't need to eat, drink, or breathe. And yeah, I was just looking at that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Damn, I thought there was something in there. I thought. Yep, you I was uh, hoping and afraid. I just I just read through the whole Eberron. <laughs> A mayonnaise bath, I heard. Yeah, it, 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 it applies as long as you're a creature. It doesn't specify creature type. Yeah. So the, the, right. it does apply, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, that's its legendary action. So, um, Raul, it is your turn. You and I have to use my action to, to dash. get out of space. Uh, and I get to make the save once I'm out of, yes. out of line of sight? Correct. All right, so... I'll take my one, two, three, four, five, six is my dash. And then one, two, does that break line of sight if I'm over there? Uh, yes, I will say yes. All right, so now can I make my save now? Um, you make the save at the end, end of, of my turn. turn. Okay. Yeah. I was trying to game the system. Uh, <laughs> woo, nat 20. All right, uh, you snap out of it. Wow! wow. And um, how? Long, and I can't heal myself. Uh, I can't take healing, right? Uh, it has now been the Mummy Lord's full turn. Got it. So you now can. Yeah. Next turn. All right. Yeah. Um, I still get another legendary action. Uh, so um, he's gonna punch Chug some more. Um, uh, let me see if there's anything I can do. Uh, uh, fortunately, I only got a 13 to hit. You missed. Okay. Uh, now we come to Chug's turn. Um, Alright, so you guys gave me a crazy idea. Wait, am I afraid? I don't remember. You are indeed. I am afraid? Yeah. Alright, well, before I run away, um, and can I still use my um, k- spend a key point disengage? Uh, yes, you can spend a key point to disengage. Okay, I'll, yeah. I'll do that, but before I disengage, I'm gonna, like, insult this mummy lord. I'm gonna tell him that he's ugly, and that he's not that powerful, and that he's not gonna conquer anything, and that we're not afraid of him. And I'm, I'm gonna say, and I, and I dare you to prove me wrong, and I wanna run back to the T-Rex room. Mmm. Okay. Um, let's see how far can I get? I can get pretty far, but you guys are there. So. What's your What's your speed? Um, forty five. Okay, so yeah, you can get ninety feet back. So you can basically get all the way back to the T Rex if you want to. Um, but they're they're there, so I'm gonna stay here. All right. I don't, don't want to pass them. Okay, oh, that's line of sight though. You need to. Oh wait, am I still in line of sight? I am. Yeah, from there. Here? Uh, from from there, I'll say yeah, yeah. So I, can I roll the save then? Yeah. Ooh, pretty good. What was that again? Wisdom. Yeah, that's a modified twenty. Woo! So you break out of it. Now it's my turn, and I realize that I should have actually used the legendary action because I can't see you now. <laughs> so I don't have line of sight to attack you with spells, and if I move, the mind whip prevents me from taking an action. <sighs> yep. <sighs> Don't hate the player, hate the game. <sighs> hate Tasha. <laughs> you know, you know, it's it's times like this that really 
really, really, really make me glad that I prepared Cloud Kill. <laughs> Ooh. It makes... <laughs> So he knows that you went down the, the corridor, so he can see the start of the corridor, so he's just going to drop a cloud kill right there. Oh, man. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's it for me. Um, so, Osiris, it is your turn. Uh, yep. So, yeah, when you start your turn there, you make a con save against the poison. Good, 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 good. I get a 15. Uh, that is a failed save. Yep. Um, so that is going to be um, a total of uh, 22 poison damage. Okay. Are you still up? I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. All right. Um, it is your turn. Choking through the cloud, I turn to Chug and I, and I say... Chug, do I do I have permission to make oh. you stronger? Oh, absolutely, always. Um, Thank you for asking for consent. Yeah, no, no problem. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to. Uh, can I see Chug? That's, I guess, the question. You know, Chug is there, so I'm willing to be lenient in this case. Okay, I'm going to... So I, I kind of pop my head out of the cloud and I look back at the T-Rex and I look at Chug and I'm going to cast Polymorph on <laughs> Chug and my quill starts writing words all around all around Chug and the words start to form a magical T-Rex. So you can still see Chug kind of floating, but there's a T-Rex body made out of magical incarnations of words and stuff like that and chug is now a t-rex <laughs> cool cool i figured that gave you a lot more hit points and now you can go i gotta get the stats for a t-rex yeah yeah um, they also have the intelligence of a t-rex though yes I think, but yes incidentally people forget this a t-rex has a wisdom of 12. wow and polymorph does state that you can differentiate friend from foe. And, foam, and so. in my books, recognizing your friends and having the presence of mind to not go into a crazy berserk rage, it's more about wisdom than intelligence. Mm -hmm. So yes, yeah, so Ch you should be able to control that token now, Chug. All right, just, I'm just looking at these T-Rex stats, okay. And I'm going to get the heck out of this cloud kill. Okay, I imagine that, that the T-Rex takes the form of a Warforged T-Rex. Oh, uh, <laughs> Mecha T-Rex? Yeah, okay. it's a Mecha okay. Rex. I'm a Mecha Godzilla? Yes. Um, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Grimlock. So if I cast Polymorph, can I, I can still use my bonus action to cast another spell, right? Uh, no, because you... you or, no, it's... Uh, can never mind. Yeah. Never mind. I had a different plan in my head. Yeah. But Polymorph is great. Let's do it. All right. Uh... Mral, it is your turn. All right, I have to make a con save. Con? All right, con could be worse. Could be worse. Could be worse. Could be worse. Nineteen. That's a successful save. Uh, so in this case, it's only um, is it half damage? I think so. Oof, I'm going down. <laughs> uh, it's half a twenty, so that's ten. All right, I'm down. Ah! You choke down, collapse onto the ground as the poisonous fumes enter your lungs. Oh no! Um, don't don't worry, Chug. All right. Wait, what kind of what kind of damage is it? Poison. Can absorb elements work on poison damage? That was what I was looking. Because if you can take it down to five, no, no? it's acid, cold, fire, lightning, okay. thunder. In that case, I need a death saving throw for, from you. Let's go with a nine there, Monty. <laughs> All right, that's one failed death save. Okay, okay. S We're Osiris, fine. you see, you s just see Mrowl's tail like flop out of the edge of the cloud kill. Oh no. Chug, it is your turn. Um. So for this poison cloud, how how high up is it? How? Um. It's a twenty foot radius. So I'm gonna say that you're still in it, 
uh, as the T-Rex. So give I me am a car- less than 20 feet tall. I guess that's a I really good like question. I feel like I'm more than 20 feet tall. Let's ask Google. You are 18. You know what? Let, let's do this. 18. I'll, I, I'm willing to compromise. Give me a constitution saving throw with advantage. Oh, okay. Oh, good thing. Advantage. That's a 19. That's a save. That's a successful save. So in your T-Rex form, you're only going to take 10 poison damage. All right, then I've got to try this. Um, new HP. How much is it? It's like a hundred and. It's a hundred and thirty-six. Yeah. yeah, you'll be around. And then I need to bit. subtract the damage, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Basic addition, my nemesis. <laughs> um. All right, so. There, Morale's down. I, did I even see him go down? He's like way down there, and I'm like way up here. I probably didn't yeah. even notice that. I've got. All right. It. Well, I hope. I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> T Rex rage back into the room then, completely <laughs> forgetting my previous plan. <laughs> Sorry, it's. And I'm gonna multi attack. I'm gonna do the bite, and I can be back ten feet from this guy for yep. it. Yep. Yep. So, four. D12 plus 7. I did not expect to be using D12s. What do you get for the hit roll? Um, Yeah, sorry. That was a 21. Oh, yeah. That's a hit. (laughs) Uh, Okay, so the first one plus 7, that's a 10. Plus 7, that's 11. So 22. Or sorry, 21. Or 11, 20, 22, 32, 32 plus 15 is 47. Um, what that's happens? Oh, is he <laughs> that, dead? That's all it takes. <laughs> even, oh, really? Even I don't even it... get to do the tail swipe? <laughs> uh, you can for style points. So tell us what you want to, how it goes down. So I'm just like bite and bite the head then bite the the torso then bite the legs like you know when you're eating a gummy bear and you're being like vicious about it and you just bite it all the way down and then i'm gonna tail swipe and smash the remaining against the wall completely pulverizing it (laughs) amazing um and and i'm gonna like roar like the t-rex did at the end of jurassic park and a banner (laughs) falls yeah Yeah, a banner (laughs) one one of the the curtains falls down (laughs) yeah and you hear the just like that yeah man (laughs) well (laughs) with that with the mummy lord destroyed uh and the keys to unlock the various chests in your possession and five minutes left in our game tonight. The three of you are able to take your assembled keys and with the information- Did someone heal me? Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, Um, Yeah, I drag you out of the cloud and I feed you a health potion (gasps) and slap you a bit. We don't have time for you to be laying around. We need to go get these artifacts. (laughs) With with your assembled information, and some very careful applications of uh, dexterity and uh, uh, and careful planning and some magic, you're able to get through the the vaults and recover the three artifacts and hopefully make it out of the city of Drakenheim. What misadventures, uh, it's a shame we don't get to play out those misadventures, but you have been able to get the keys and collect the artifacts and maybe cause yourselves a little bit of extra trouble along the way. Can we steal the globe? Too? <laughs> Absolutely, you can steal the globe. How yes. long does the polymorph potion last? Uh, the uh, polymorph I, I, spell um, lasts one hour. I, I can remove it. I just... don't want you to remove it. I've <laughs> oh, never okay. felt better in my life. Can I, you, uh, you ride out ride? of Drakenheim on, yeah. <laughs> on the, the back- Troll King <laughs> does not mess with this. Yeah, yeah, on, on your way out. <laughs> For the record, I packed secret chest, and I imagine I packed it just for this reason. I summon my secret chest before we leave, and I put all of the elven artifacts in my secret chest, as well as the globe, as well as everything that we can grab from this museum. We loot the museum and leave riding on the back of a (laughs) T-Rex. Fantastic. Mecha T-Rex. A mecha (laughs) T-Rex. 
And that is where we end our adventure for this evening. <laughs> on that image of our heroes riding off into the sunset on a Mecha Warforged T-Rex. <laughs> Best. I'll play your bagpipes on from the back. Oh, awesome, awesome, perfect. <laughs> yes! I don't know how to play bagpipes, but it doesn't it's, matter. It's... <laughs> uh, Amazing. So we have the True Compass, the Writ of Passage, and the maps, the, the maps of the North Pole. Indeed. To the North Pole! <laughs> <laughs> on the, from the back of a T-Rex, I think no better way riding in style. <laughs> uh Excellent. What a finale. Woo! Thank you, Monty. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Indeed, indeed. Um, so excellent. Um, first of all, a massive thank you to our wonderful guests, Nate and Nina, with your incredibly creative characters, Mral and Chug, um, and your awesome input in putting this adventure together. Uh, with our, We asked our guests to collaborate with us on coming up with a premise for the adventure hooks and everything. So Nina and Nate really went the, the distance with making this whole thing uh, come, come together. So a giant thank you to both of you and to Kelly as well for playing along this, this evening. Uh, what, a, what a fun romp that was. Yeah. Um, I also want to thank Kyle, who is working behind the scenes in the chat to make everything wonderful. And also, um, again, thank you to our guests. And and just it, it's been an absolute pleasure and, and a blast. And the characters were amazing. Absolutely. We're happy to uh, happy to contribute to the, the Dungeon Dudes community. Amazing. Happy to have you on. And hopefully we will be able to continue this adventure someday and just see what happens at the North Pole. <laughs> yeah. If we ever have another break, uh, hopefully we can do an expedition to the North Pole with these same three characters and see see what happens. Yes. Antics. I don't know. That's, what that's, could a, that's possibly an old nothing idea. Nothing will go wrong. Giant nothing walruses. will go wrong at all. For sure. So with, with that, um, that concludes uh, our, our adventure this evening. Uh, again, a big, big thanks as always. Uh, Kelly, where can folks find us and where and uh, uh, us as the Dungeon Dudes? And then we'll get Nina and Nate to tell us where they can find more about Dwarven Forge. Yeah, so definitely you can check us out on YouTube. Um, we are the Dungeon Dudes in case you are a first time watcher. Um, I will also mention that we post Thursday episodes uh, where we discuss everything Dungeons and Dragons, advice for players and guides for Dungeon Masters. And actually that's every Tuesday and Thursday. And then Tuesday nights, you can find us here at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes, where we play in our homebrew world of Drakenheim. You might also be interested to hear that Drakenheim is going to be coming out as a playable module for 5th edition. So go to drakenheim.com and join the mailing list so that you can be up to date on all the information regarding the upcoming Kickstarter campaign to turn Drakenheim into a book. Uh, I should also mention that you can join our Patreon community. We have a great Patreon community that also has an exclusive Discord. So you can join that at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. And you can join us on Discord where you can join in in our monthly writer's rooms where you can help us work on scripts and you can submit questions for our monthly Q and A's. All of that is happening. So check us out on Patreon, check us out on YouTube and join us here on Twitch for our live games. Amazing, amazing. And Nate and Nina, where can they find more? Uh, where can the fine folks here find uh, more about Dwarven Forge? I have no idea. What uh, are so, there? okay. So we are, you can go to our website. It's dwarvenforge.com. You can check us out on social media. On Twitter, we are at Dwarven Forge. On Instagram, we are at Dwarven Forge Official. And on Twitch, we are Dwarven Forge Live. We stream every Wednesday and Thursday on Twitch. Um, and I'm at Nate Taylor on Twitter. And what are you, Nina? Oh, I'm um, at N I H N A H on Instagram. Wonderful. And Kelly, do you want to give us a little preview of what we can expect in our next Untold Tales? Who is our special guest next week? Oh boy. So next week is actually a very special episode. Uh, for those of you who have watched our Monster of the Week series, we are bringing back Mitch. Mitch is a uh, friend of ours, longtime friend. 
and he has appeared in a few of our episodes previously. He also streams online uh, with Joe and Kyle as uh, the Quarter Life Gaming. Uh, and also, I will be running the game as DM. So the next upcoming Untold Tales will be my first time on this Twitch channel running D&D &D as a Dungeon Master. And I will be running the game for Monty, Mitch, and Joe. And we're working on our characters right now, and it's going to be very exciting. It is a chapter that I have written for the Drakenheim book, and I'm very excited to show all of you what we have in store. And I am very much looking forward to playing a character for a change. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that'll be a lot yeah. of fun uh so join us next week we will be back uh with more untold tales of drakenheim thank you all for 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 watching we will see you next time back in drakenheim